Hey guys, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And uh, I'm based out of Minnesota, and so today I wanted to kind of continue to comment on the COVID-19, George Floyd, big government thing. And uh, it looks like we're on the down curve here in Minneapolis, meaning we've we've peaked total uh, with total anarchy and, and rioting and looting and stuff, and now it looks like it's, it's kind of the down curve and, and we're heading more back towards uh, normal or, or law and order or whatever. And uh, I guess the real question is, what is that normal going to be? Uh, what, what, what comes after this? And I think I've, I have a couple thoughts and observations about it. One, uh, before this we had coronavirus, which all of a sudden now isn't a big deal anymore, which because it never was a big deal. So uh, th that's, that's interesting. Uh, and I, th I have a couple thoughts about that. One, you have all these small businesses that were forcibly closed, effectively, from coronavirus, right? We had all these restrictions in place and these distancing things and you couldn't go certain places and just, you know, the hundreds of businesses being forcibly closed against their will by the government, saying it's for safety. It's for safety. We're going to close on your business for safety and for public good and you just need to obey us on this and if you open up, we're going to put you in jail and all these horrible threats, right? That same government here in Minnesota when everyone else was opening up, Minnesota kept forcibly closed. That same government wholesale abandoned the city of Minneapolis two nights in a row to left to their own devices. So we're, we, we know best, we're gonna keep you safe, we'll, we'll, we'll make laws for safety. Oh, there's rioting and looting and lots of problems. Um, you're on your own, goodbye. And they just leave. So not only have these businesses been uh, forcibly closed by the government. Then they risk looting, and many of them have been looted and had their windows smashed in, and their livelihoods destroyed. I had a friend who owned some businesses in the area, and he told me he received three letters, uh, two from the city of Minneapolis, one from the county, saying that you are not allowed to defend your property. Can't, can't defend your property. Can't do that. Just board it up and leave. Collect the insurance checks later. One, what if you don't have insurance? I would assume most businesses do, but you know, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Uh, and two, <laughs> I mean, is, are you joking me? It, it's like trading one thug for another. First, the government comes in, tells you what to do and how to do your business. Then the street hoodlums come in, ransack your business. And now you're supposed to go back to the thuggery of the government to tell you what you can and can't do with your business. They weren't there to do their actual job of, of keeping some, some civility and some law and order in society. And so now we're supposed to just trust them again to keep us safe from from diseases. I don't I don't see that happening. I mean, this this is like stranger than fiction is really what I've been thinking about the past couple days. This is stranger than fiction. This is so insane that if I wrote this in a sci-fi novel and gave that to you, you'd be like, "Come on, Dylan." I mean, that's that's just that's ridiculous. That would never happen. Those are the kind of things you would say. But it's happening. It's right here. It, it it's happening. So. I don't see how we're going to go back to that normal. I'll be really curious to see where we sit in about four months, right? Because I don't know how any sane person could go back to allowing the government to tell them what to do when they just wholesale abandon the city of Minneapolis to mayhem and madness for two nights in a row. They burned down the third precinct in Minneapolis. It's about six miles from my house. They burned it down. They burned down a police precinct. Okay, but these are the people that we should trust to keep us safe. Think about that. The other thing is, and I've, I've seen this this uh, quote on, on Twitter a lot lately, is the, the debate about gun control is over. Like, uh, obviously, this is why we need guns for stuff like this. And I obviously agree to that. I know what they mean when they say the debate is over, right? Like, duh, look at, look at the facts. Of, of course, we're going to need guns for this. Uh, the debate is not over. They'll continue to come for our guns because they hate us and they hate America. Uh, but... I do think that there's been a lot of people who've, who've woken up and said, whoa, I wish I had a gun. I've had a lot of people call me who have been against guns and friends of mine who, who aren't into that whole thing and think I'm crazy and whatever. And, and now they're like, uh, hey, when, when, when can I get a gun? <laughs> How do I get a gun? When can I take a permit class? Uh, because when the chips are down and the city of Minneapolis has called off police and fire, not coming, we can't come anyway, or their last I saw, there were 58 911 calls deep. Like that's how many they had in the queue that they couldn't respond to. You're your own first responder, right? You, you, you are your own first responder. No one is coming to help. It's up to you. 
And that's why we own guns. That's one of the reasons that we own guns. So it's also one of the reasons that we're trained to use those guns and we know what we're doing. So I, I do think that in some effect the, the gun control debate is is over, meaning that, hey, it, this, is, this is why. It's pretty clear. We just saw the city of Minneapolis burn for three, four nights in a row. We saw the complete abandonment. They called in the National Guard originally. They had like 500 troops deployed, and I thought, oh, yeah, that's going to do a lot. And they just totally cut tail and ran the first night. Just cut tail and ran. Didn't have enough people to control it. Just gave it up. And again, th this is a f complete failure of leadership from the Minnesota government uh, all the way through. But, but that, that's really not the point of this video. I'm just saying, look, there's a reason we have guns. Because we cannot trust the government to keep us safe. Not from coronavirus, not from looting and rioting. They, they just don't have the resources that no government ever has. We, we have the most powerful government in the history of mankind ever. And it still can't, it still can't stop looting in a couple cities. Right? Minneapolis isn't even that big of a city. The city proper has like 300,000 people. Uh, the metro area, I think, has like maybe up to 3 million, give or take. Uh, so maybe it's not even that high. Maybe it's like one and a half, something like that. You'll have to Wikipedia it. Point being, it's not that big. It's not that big of a city. And there was just uncontrolled rioting and looting for at least two nights in a row. So all that to say, I think the main things we need to take away here are, are we going to continue to let the government tell us what to do when they can't even keep up their end of the bargain? And yes, that's why I need an AR-15. Don't ever ask me that ever again. That's pretty clear. Lastly, I would be a huge fan if we saw some police reform coming out of this thing. Uh, the militarization of the police and police living without accountability has been a problem in this country for a long time. This is not a racial thing to me. This is a power thing to me. And those who have power live by different rules than us who do not. And that is an injustice and a huge problem, which I would, of course, love to see changed. So let's, let's think and push along those lines. Let, let's push along the lines of there, there's a power dynamic at play here that is not sustainable in a healthy republic. Uh, when the police get to live by different rules than you and me, and those in government get to live by different rules than you and me, that's a big problem. That's not sustainable. That's what leads to the downfall of nations. So... Hope that's some food for thought. Hope that gives you some perspective on it. I, I hope that's helpful. If not, uh, delete this video. You can thumbs down it or something. Do brave deeds and endure.